Firstly, Prime Minister, thank you for your time. Good to be with you. What do you know about the Greenhouse Mafia? It's a term I haven't heard of. I assume it's referring to uh, those who are climate change sceptics out there. Prime Minister Rudd chose not to look at a list naming the no dirty way. dozen, but admitted it's difficult dealing with lobbyists. Some people are happy, others are not. Guess what? Life's like that. Our challenge is to get on with a solution for the planet. Crying foul at the emissions trading scheme, which is meant to limit their pollution output, these highly profitable companies have demanded millions of dollars in government handouts to buffer any impact on their bottom line. The government is now giving away billions of dollars to the very companies uh, that uh, should be penalised for their, their pollution. What we want to ensure is that our businesses are not put at an unacceptable competitive disadvantage against other businesses in other economies. Australia's coal exports make up just 3 to 4 per cent of gross domestic product and at the height of the mining boom made up just 1.3 per cent of jobs. Yet they create almost 50 per cent of the country's greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that's why the government has also invested in a massive new clean coal initiative. And what we have done is frame this globally. It's called the Global Carbon Capture and Storage Institute. It's a theory where carbon is caught and buried underground. The problem is no one knows how to store it. Our government put two billion dollars towards it. If we can prove this up at a very large scale, it's a huge revenue earner for Australia for the future. And for large coal-fired uh, generating countries like India and China. Households trying to do their bit by the environment have been left high and dry. Just last week, the government pulled the pin on the rebate on solar panels, ending the policy three weeks early and leaving at least 1,400 people out of pocket. I think it indicates that they're not really serious about greenhouse gas emissions. It's far more cost effective for us to put panels on our roof than for them to build lots of power stations. Melbourne grandmother Patricia Devlin is now hoping for a refund. I also believe the government's going to lose votes over this one. Solar shop owner Joe Stagg was shocked when given just eight hours to pull the plug on the rebate. I would say hundreds of customers are either angry or upset or both. Um, beyond just those that we've spoken to for missing out on the rebate. Why did you end the solar panel rebate scheme early? We said we'd uh, commit for funding. I think it was for something like um, uh, $150 million. We invested $700 million. Are you saying the government didn't properly budget for this scheme? Well, can I say that the new uh, system of discount, as I said, is going from a scheme of some $9,000 plus to some $7,000 plus. It's not going to zero. And this is one of the most supportive schemes anywhere in the world. The Senate votes on that next week. Also being voted on is Australia's target to cut pollution. The government is asking for a 5% reduction in carbon emissions on 2000 levels by 2020. 15 to 25% if there's a global agreement. But scientists say a 40% reduction is what's needed to prevent a global temperature rise of 2 degrees. Dr Richard Dennis from the Australian Institute. There's no doubt that, uh, that this government has watered down its, uh, its efforts to tackle climate change and it's ramped up the amount of assistance that it's providing to the polluters. The government, elected on a green ticket, now seems to be out of line with the rest of the developed world, weakening its carbon emissions target by as low as a 5% reduction in pollution. That's only an eighth of the target set by both the UK and Germany, and they rely just as heavily on the coal and heavy industries. We still have the highest per capita greenhouse pollution uh, in the world. This week, the United Nations complained the targets fell well short of what's needed to avoid catastrophic climate change, leading to water shortages, displacement of people, species extinction, and the loss of landmarks, such as the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists tell us that amongst all developed countries, Australia will be the hardest hit by climate change. The world will decide at a global summit on climate change in Copenhagen in December. Is success guaranteed? Of course not. But what I know for a fact, unless you're in there having a go, determined to make a difference, nothing will happen. And we will suffer most and earliest in terms of jobs, in terms of our economy, and in terms of the environment we leave for our kids.